What's up, guys? Welcome back to another discussion here on Red 5 Reviews. Today we'll be discussing the video game Jedi Fallen Order, also the uh, sequel that we got teased with a few days ago. And in joining me today is our special guest. We have Ben from Star Wars Timeline. How are you doing today, Ben? Thanks for coming on. I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me. We're switching roles here. You were on my podcast, now I'm enjoying yours. I love answering questions way more than asking them. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm kind of the I'm kind of the same way. But yeah, Ben had me on his uh, podcast a few months ago, and uh, it was a great episode. And again, very grateful that I was on your show. And thank you again for having me on then. And uh, just I've been meaning to get him on my channel, but uh, just as most of you know, had a little new addition to the family, so things kind of projects got slowed down, but. Glad things are now starting to slow down, and I am ready. Today, uh, uh, Ben has been uh, posting some uh, video game uh, playthroughs, uh, mostly with the the Fallen or uh, not the Fallen Order, uh, the Old Republic. There we go. <laughs> right. Uh, with the Old Republic, which is great, by the way. Go check that out, because I love the Old Republic games, and I wish I could figure out how to do that whole uh, playthrough gaming thing, but it's mm -hmm. just <laughs> still uh, figuring that part out. But, but right. today, we're going to be discussing our thoughts on Jedi Fallen Order and also giving some speculation on the sequel that we got teased with at Star Wars Celebration. So starting off, Ben, like your overall thoughts on Jedi Fallen Order? Well, let me preface that a little bit, right? We always talk about within the bubble of Star Wars fandom, it's like, hey, you know, what is your favorite Star Wars game or movie? As if Star Wars is the only thing that exists, right? For mm. me, obviously, I've been gaming for such a long time since like the Atari generation, like a super boomer generation, you know, where the dawn of gaming. And I was always influenced by other games that I like and then comparing my Star Wars games with it. So in other words, you know, you check out a Star Wars game and I started playing those since PlayStation 1 days. I never owned a Super Nintendo. I kind of skipped from 8-bit straight to 32-bit generation. So I never played those classic super star wars games so i jumped on playstation one and it was the phantom menace you know the racer and Nintendo 60, all that stuff started there but when jedi fallen order was first announced i thought to myself okay all right ea is not kidding anymore this could be serious this could be big but my biggest question was what this game is going to be like in comparison to other games that i like so when i played it Something special happened, first of all. Let me just, guys, tell you the endurance that Star Wars fans have. I had this game sitting on my shelf entirely for a year, wrapped in plastic. I refused to play it on PS4 because I'm a, a, a frame purist. It needed to run constant, perfect 60 frames. So I waited for a whole year till I get a PS5, and I got it on PS5. And my general impression was basically what my brother told me a year ago. He's like, Ben, you're a Star Wars fan. This game is going to blow your mind. How come you're not playing? It's like, well, what's wrong with you, dude? I'm like, no, no, I'm just waiting. Just just let me, let me persevere a little bit. I put it on my PS5, and it became my instant favorite Star Wars game. These are my quick thoughts. Nice. Yeah, I, uh, like you, I, I did play the Super Nintendo Star Wars games, and they were nice. frustrating. Back in the game? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I actually recently bought the Empire Strikes Back Super Nintendo one. and Nice. It's it's a pain in the butt. I will say that like <laughs> it's uh, like I think uh, part of the reason I've gone bald was like, you know, ripping my hair out to playing that game. Um, but yeah, like you, though, I did play some of the uh, uh, I did play Jedi power battles, which was essentially mm -hmm. the Phantom Menace. But you could play as different Jedi throughout the story. Um, that was a fun game. Uh, and yeah, there was just uh, there was some, you know, Star Wars fighting games here and there and i do i never actually did play the pod racer game i want to though uh, my mm -hmm. wife played it though and she was obsessed with it really and yeah like she and my brother-in-law like they said they played that for hours and they were obsessed nice. with it so i'm gonna have to find it now i think they're i think you can get it on ps4 store but um mm -hmm. um but yeah when i played this game though like originally uh i was led to believe that this was gonna be like you didn't start out with a lightsaber mm -hmm. like i remember them making a rumor that like part of your quest was to find a lightsaber and you had to be a Jedi kind of like high, like doing a lot of stealth. Right. But um, uh, we didn't get that, but that's totally fine. Cause um, the way they handled it was great. Like I honestly, like I've been replaying this game probably like six times now and hmm. 
I'm still not bored with it. Like, I just love that you could just uh, customize like your character, your lightsaber, your droid. Mm -hmm. And it's just like it. I just like that you get like multiple uh, like like pers not necessarily perspectives, but like, you know, you can like, hey, this is kind of cool. You can wear this outfit, have this color lightsaber. Mm -hmm. um, with me, though, I wish I kind of <laughs> took your route and got like a PS5 because like um my game the biggest issue is like it lags so much like and like it just it pulls me out but you know it's not like a huge like there'd be times where cal would be talking to somebody they wouldn't be there for like a couple of seconds later and mm -hmm. so it was a little weird but i mean i always get through it but yeah the game what like, are you I, running it on ps4 pro or regular ps4 it's a regular ps4 that's um, why yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, i mean <laughs> i got the ps4 at a GameStop for like two hundred dollars but it was a darth vader mm -hmm. one so i couldn't turn that down oh nice That's <laughs> um cool. so but yeah um next i'd just like uh can you give us like some of the things that like you just generally like loved about this game like all your pros and and then like, yeah. we'll get into some cons yeah so sure. yeah, go ahead. Uh, that answer might take two and a half hours <laughs> yeah. no all but right. seriously um what i really enjoyed about the game is something that we hardly saw before and I think we'll see after. It's first and foremost a very cinematic, fully fleshed out story that took its time to tell itself. It didn't rush. It didn't cut corners. It didn't overstate its welcome. You know, there's this notion amongst some gamers where, you know, give me more, give me more, like Assassin's Creed, open world, 250 hours gameplay with like side mission, side quests. For me, as a huge fan of RPG, that's my primary genre that I enjoy, especially in the Japanese realm, when games are within 35 to 45 hour mark to play through, like casually, excluding the side missions, that's the sweet spot. You know, sometimes even the greatest adventure, when it prolongs and goes on and on and on, you start getting tired of it. It's like, come on, can we get to the end? I want to see the credits already. There are other games to play, you know? So there were several things about this game which instantly stood out. But the first and foremost was the story. You know, obviously, when the, we can't have a Star Wars gaming discussion without talking about the Knights of the Old Republic 1 and right. 2. When they dropped an original Xbox, first of all, oh, my God, Xbox, an American gaming system, the new kid on the block. Everybody was excited as hell for it, right, when it came out. Oh, my God, now we have a competition to Japanese consoles. And those games were banging, man. But my problem, even back in the day, maybe because I was like young adult already, I was like 19 and 20 in 2003, I was 22, right? When those games started coming out. So I was a little bit more critical and I was looking at things in that game. I was like, okay, so the story is kind of well written. All right, Bioware, I know these guys, but man, what's up with the presentation? Like graphically, it looks so par, subpar compared to other Xbox games, even compared to PS2 games. Final Fantasy X, which preceded it maybe like by a year or so, looked 10 times better. Mm -hmm. So there were a couple of things with previous Star Wars games. I was like, um, the presentation, I'm not entirely happy. I'm not quite there yet with that perfect, ideal Star Wars experience. New Jedi Order, uh, Fallen Order gave me that. Second, what I really liked about it, it's honestly the first and the only Star Wars game that made the lightsaber feel magical again. Yeah, because when you play the older games, and you know, no, I, I don't try to discredit older artists and creators, those games are phenomenal for the old days. But let's be honest with ourselves like, the lightsabers always felt like glow sticks, like, yeah, they didn't feel they didn't give you that umph. Me, as a kid who grew up in the 80s watching the original saga, the first moment that Luke ignites the lightsaber is just the coolest thing in the world. Him just waving it around and hearing the sound and hearing that that aura that surrounds it, right? That cinematically, how they present it. That's what the Jedi uh, Fallen Order did. And third, the four, most important piece of uh, entertainment for me was the exploration. Yeah. We'll talk about the, the fighting and mechanics. I'm pretty sure you have plenty of questions there. But the exploration was also really cool because A, it wasn't an open world and it didn't need to be. With aimless, mm -hmm. huge maps, we just traverse and there's nothing to do. With like, hey, there's a pointer in the map. Just go to that place and do boring stuff. It didn't have that. It was more structured like the franchise, which I adored since day one, Tomb Raider. 
It's a mm. hub-based corridor runner, but there's a lot of incentive to go back to the planet, to visit the corridors, to go to your places which are previously locked. Now you have the new skills, new abilities to go there. And what I really appreciate about that is that it's not like God of War, where you just traverse a corridor once, look at the lush graphics, and you forget about that area. With Jedi Fallen Order, once you return back and again and again and again to those locations, they become part of you. You right. become more intimately connected with them, and you feel like, wow, Braca is a real place. You know, Korriban is a real place. When you go there, you've experienced the world. That's what Tomb Raider titles were always were. The environment is the main protagonist, and then it's Lara Croft. Same here. Cal Kist, uh, Kestis is our real hero, but it's really these exotic worlds and environments that made it special. Yeah, I totally 100% agree with you on that. I loved how attention to detail each of these worlds were. And like you said, mm -hmm. like um, for me, it was kind of like I can kind of compared it to playing like uh, like maybe the one of the Batman Arkham games or the Spider-Man games where it's like, um, yes, you're going to different planets, but I mean, it's just, it's kind of like different parts of the city on the map. Like if you're playing like a uh, Spider-Man or Batman, and then you just go to that, that same location and just, you know, do this side mission or find this uh, secret or whatever. And I really did, uh, like that. Um, like I did like that it gave you something like to do. It's not just, you know, there just for enjoyment. Like, mm -hmm. like, oh, well, it shows here on this map that you only explored like 20%. Like once you go back and, you know, like you said, you know, you got these new skills. Now you can open these doors or you can uh, uh, go climb these ropes or just find the fi go over these new obstacles to like find like new secrets mm -hmm. and new crates and everything. You know, it was just even though like there was part of that was a con because you know it's just like it's just, sometimes like for me it was just like like it's like that one part like say in like Kashyyyk or whatever where there's one part where, a secret that you didn't find and it's like all the way to like the other side of the world I was just like well here we go you know but um <laughs> but um yeah I also the story I honestly consider this one of my favorite stories set within the new canon just yeah. because it's like you said, it took its time. It took plenty of time to tell the story. And, you know, it focused on all of the elements that make a great story, like, you know, yeah. character development. And, and uh, like you said, with a lightsaber, though, I also 100% agree with you because um, part of that was, uh, you know, like when you play the Battlefront games, like the lightsaber combat's like the same thing, like throughout, yeah. like, you know, it's just block and then just swipe. But with this, you know, it gave you more strategies, like, because you're going to need them to, like, mm -hmm. uh, outmaneuver your opponent, like, depending on who you're fighting. And I really did. It, it was very, um, it was very, uh, like, attentive to detail. And another big thing for me is, like, I'm comparing it to a previous uh, Star Wars game. Uh, it wasn't like a button masher, like the Force Unleashed, um, mm -hmm. like, like my friend who I watched play that said, like, I can actually play like most of this game just by pressing force push and, you know, and it kills everybody. And yeah. um, this game doesn't give you that option. Like it, one, your force abilities get drained very easily and mm -hmm. you have to, you have to actually think like how you have I to think. Absolutely, man. Mm -hmm. And you know, when uh, Force Unleashed first came out, they were like really pitching it hard that, you know, it's approved by George Lucas. We have his approval and they were, uh, advertising that new havoc system that you'll be able to do physical manipulation in the environment to such an extent that oh my god nobody has ever seen stuff like this and when the game actually came out i'll be honest with you i was jaded i was pissed at that game i did not like it i own it now i, I rebought all of my ps3 games but when it first came out first the physics engine they were trying to push was not there ps2 titles before that did it and they did it better like there was a psyops game like a science fiction special forces kind of game where your people had psych psychic powers and you literally used the jedi ability without it being called the the force uh, star wars game and the like you said the the force unleashed it was just a button masher the the gameplay mechanic didn't feel innovative once again the lightsabers felt like glow sticks and once you see the main star get, getting tossed, like, first of all, pierced through his gut with a lightsaber, tossed into open space, and he survives. I'm like, dude, come on. Maybe <laughs> it's my personal bias that I don't like OP characters, especially in Star Wars. So I was jaded for, for a moment there. But later, obviously, years later, Sam Witwer 
we all love him. He's he's a tr- national treasure as far as Star Wars is concerned. I'm like, I went back to the story. I still haven't finished either Force of Least games. I plan to play them on my channel, but <laughs> they don't they pale in comparison to the Jedi Fallen Order combat. Yes, a hundred percent agree. Like, on I'm so glad that Cal did not start off over like OP because yeah. like even like when you upgrade all of his force abilities, he's still not that powerful. Like he's still like um he can hold his own in a lightsaber fight and, you know, again, like in, he's more experienced at the end. Right. And, uh, and even then, like, I mean, like, cause we show that like, even though he's got all of his abilities upgraded, like, mm-hmm. and, you know, spoiler, you know, Darth Vader comes in, like he's got nothing, like absolutely nothing on Darth Vader. And you know what? I also really, really appreciated. Whereas games like Knights Old Lord Republic took their sweet time to grant you a lightsaber. You literally had to, clear up a whole planet that was my biggest gripe with the original Kator game here you get the lightsaber early on but like you mentioned you're a padawan and your skill growth is correlated with the narrative of the story you become stronger in the game through gameplay as Cal Kestis becomes more self-assured more confident and supported by friends who surround him and they give them that boost that he needs to unlock his Jedi abilities. And even towards the end of the game, he is a Jedi. He's not Grandmaster, Super, Star Destroyer, kind of like crazy guy. He's somebody that you could believe in, that you could also... He's almost almost like a Luke prototype. You believe that you could be him. Yeah, absolutely. Um, very relatable. And I, yeah. I like the... On that note, I like that, you know, we get more than one star wars character that you're invested in like Mm -hmm. with like um like the the three main characters like seer uh uh siri junda siri junda yeah and greece there we go and cal Mm -hmm. and um like they're all in a way just kind of like they have their flaws like Mm -hmm. seer you know she doesn't trust herself she cut herself off Mm -hmm. and greece you know admits that he was selfish for mm-hmm. a very long time and cal you know is this they all three overcome you know their uh their trauma and their fears and everything and i like that we got that you know it's just i like that we became more invested in more than one character just not just cal kestis and um yeah. even with Marin when she joins <sighs> later i i did like uh i did like that story arc and you know it kind of i even rewatched like um uh, part of the the Clone Wars show where uh, Count Dooku mm-hmm. and Grievous goes up against the uh, the the zombie Night Sisters, and I'm just like, oh man. So, yeah. and, and I'll get to a little bit more about that in just a minute, but uh, <laughs> yeah, but um, it's just I just and like I do like that it connects to the the canon very well because i know that there's some stories where you know they're like, well, wait, hold on a second, like this kind of contradicts this, but you know, that's a conversation for another time but you know is this um you the word i'm thinking of is like you um this feels like a star wars story it's not just like you know like hey here's a lightsaber you know right and it's not just cal Kestis story it's a story about an ensemble of characters absolutely i I just you know what i found uh, adam one of the characters that appears the least in the game but i found to be so one of the most central to the story is like Obi-Wan obviously dies through the middle of the first film, right? And he shows up as a ghost in an Empire and Return, but he's still pretty central to Luke's maturity. In this one, I got to give a shout out to, uh, you know, Cordova, Tony Amendalo. I, I loved him in the Stargate SG-1. He's amazing. I'm one of my favorite actors. And when he was revealed to be in this game, I was like, oh my God, he's going to be in this game? A Jedi Master? Let's see what it's all about. And you obviously you see him as you progress the game. You only see like his uh, holographic images. I felt that he was so well written and acted that it's a perfect mentor role in a Star Wars setting where you don't see a lot of him. But every time he imparts information to you, it's so important. I was like, oh, man, I love him. Yeah. And just like I love that uh, speech that he gave like whenever uh, they're on Ilum. Mm-hmm. And uh, that quote that he has, I always love is just like failure is not the end, you know, mm-hmm. and I just yeah, he uh, the actor did really well, like, you know, playing the uh, he didn't even like know Cal Kestis, like all of this mm-hmm. was just passed on to BD. And, you know, it was just it's very, you know, heartwarming, you know, to be like, you know, like, 
you know, Cal Kestis sees himself as flawed and, you know, he's, a, you know, he, you know, he's traumatized and everything, but like BD, like, so like, this is the person that I choose to continue Cordova's journey and everything. Mm-hmm. I, I love that. It was great. Yeah. Um, now <laughs> there were some things about the game though. Like, you know, the game's not, like I said, it's not perfect. And it's definitely one of my favorite Star Wars games. You know, there's mm-hmm. some that I just, you know, bias about just because of the nostalgia. But uh, <laughs> I, I remember like you commented when I posted a review for this, like the thing that annoys me the most about this game are the uh, the your opponents, like the things you have to fight, like the mm-hmm. like that giant frog thing on Bogano. Like it annoys me every time because um, and just like some of the uh, the. Like, you know how, like, on some of the worlds you get, like, you know, the frogs or the spiders, but then right. like, you'll fight, like, the alpha of those mm-hmm. species, mm-hmm. and they're just always annoying. And then, of course, the bounty hunters mm-hmm. always annoyed me for this reason, because when the game would lag, I would think that they wouldn't be there, and I'd be, like, looking for a secret in this area. or <laughs> And then, like, once the game, like, fully loaded, that's when I'd see the health meter and the, the shrieking music come up. I'm like, ah, dang it. And then I just like drop my lightsaber and just, you know, um, but I did like though, although they were annoying, I do agree with you. I did like that. You know, it keeps you on your toes. Like you can't just go to a world and just think, okay, Mm -hmm. I'm going to go get this secret or this uh, scan, this, um, this item and then be done with it. Like, Nope, you're going to work for it. You know? Yeah. Uh, You know, it's, I had other, see, I, I, now that you describe it to me, your experience on PlayStation, I see how much of a performance of the game can influence your opinion of it, right? Sometimes, like, some of the best games are mired by these kind of, like, technical issues. When Skyrim first came out on PS3, so many technical issues. But the game was brilliant. Everybody knew it was brilliant, but obviously the fans were very vocal. Hey, fix it, fix it, give us a patch, because people wanted to have a more fluid experience. With this game, since I was pure blue blood Benjamin with his PlayStation 5, like experiencing, you know, the perfect version of it. I found issues with something else. And they are honestly very minor for me. I would call this game nearly perfect, to be honest. Like very small gripes that I had with them. One gripe was on a purely presentation level where obviously it's very much inspired by Souls games, right? The Dark Souls and Demon Souls, all those Japanese titles where every time you sit by your campfire and all the enemies respond because once again, it wants to give you challenge and wants the character grow and blah, blah, blah. There's a lot more RPG mechanics within this action game. A lot of these games are being called modern RPGs. They're not. They're action titles that have a couple of role-playing mechanics in there to make you feel like your character is growing. And I just felt... It doesn't jive with the Star Wars universe. Here I am. I cleared off this area. I killed all of the stormtroopers in this base. I go to sleep and they're all back. So I wanted some kind of like a visual cue telling us like, hey, here's another drop ship. And it's bringing another fr- a fresh you know, garrison of, of these stormtroopers. That, that was my only thing. I didn't mind that they're responding. It was just, to me, it was, you walk into an area, they're just patrolling the same area, standing there. Like, you had no effect on this environment. I'm like, oh, dude, really? Uh, I'm not kind of crazy about this decision. But I, I understood where they're coming from gameplay-wise. Like, mm-hmm. That they needed to set up that kind of formula, and there's no way you can escape it. And the second thing was, you get, a huge surprise, you get a second lightsaber form towards the last end of the game it's like literally within two hours within within completing the game i'm like uh man could she like give it to me earlier through like midway through the game that i could feel like more badass or if i get to unlock it can i bring it over into a game plus and play that technique i don't think you can but that would have been cool like guys it's like you it's almost like the classic castlevania symphony of the night on playstation one had the single biggest most historic secret ever and the secret was you clear the entire map, the whole castle, and then it flips on its back and you get a second castle. Like, wait, wait a second. There's more. But there was a secret to it. You had to unlock it. There was an excitement in it. Same with Jedi Fallen Order. Towards the end of the game, you give me this badass dual la- uh, lightsaber. Bro, like one more hours of gameplay with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Those were my only two gripes, honestly. Other than that, it's... And one very, very small nitpick is sometimes the environmental platforming 
the physics weren't quite there. Sometimes you fell into your death, not because you sucked, but because like the it didn't detect collisions properly. You just fell into your death. Yeah, there was a couple of times recently where yeah. I was replaying and I was trying to jump to this top platform. Also, and I just went. Yeah, yeah, and that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, like on the lightsaber thing. Um, yeah, I agree. Like it, I can, like I said, I can see why they wanted to add that in at the last moment because, like, it was a very powerful move and you were going to need that against like especially when you went up against i think malikos after that malikos, and then yeah. trilla mm -hmm. and um what i wished was there like what i honestly like what you said with the symphony of the night was like um like there was more to it once you completed everything with this mm -hmm. game like when it ends it just ends and it's just like the ending my was just like just like oh yeah we spent this whole time finding this holocron and uh, like I destroyed it. I get why he destroyed it. I'm a hundred percent like, mm -hmm. you know, understanding of why he destroyed it. But it's just after that, it was just like the ending was just like, well, well where to, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then like whenever you wanted to go back and replay it, like it won't let you uh, replay the Inquisitor map again. Like, you know, mm -hmm. it's just, it takes you right back to the moment before you go to the mm -hmm. uh, the planet with the Inquisitors and just complete the game. Like, you know, all the mm -hmm. secrets, exploring the whole thing. I wish there was more to the ending. Like, uh, mm -hmm. but I mean, but I understand completely why they, I wish there was just more to it. If it was a low-key final scene for sure. Like uh, what I what I personally extracted from it, the, the emotions that it gave me, is you know obviously you have the climatic duel at the end. You know when when Vader comes out, it's probably one of the best depictions of the villain I've seen around in movies or games. He comes in strong. He totally overpowers Cal Kestis, but as we still see that Cal Kestis is an able Jedi. And he can stand up to Vader, and Vader is not all powerful. He's not omnipotent, right? Right. He's a very strong Jedi, but he and he's versus two, one Padawan and one actually Jedi Knight because Siri June that was pretty strong in the Force. So you get a great duel, but at the end of it, you have all of these characters reconcile themselves. They they go through their character growth arc, and it's hey, what's next? What what is there for the Jedi Order? Because we know what happens in the story later on. There's ten more years of this battle before the Empire falls. What is Calcastus to do? And that's the biggest question. That is the biggest opening for part two, which I don't think anybody had illusions about. By the time the credits roll and how much the game sold, three million copies within I, I believe the first month, and within a year or so, it sold eleven million copies. That's in face of EA stating something as ridiculous as like well single player games don't sell anymore we're gonna focus prioritize on multiplayer games and friends like no 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 we want single player experiences <laughs> so to me that end ending was a perfect transitional moment it's like hey we've completed these characters for you but there's still more stories for them to tell and they're like hey what else is there for us let's go on the new adventure okay I think that'd be a good uh, time to uh, speak of transition to uh, after the game ends. We uh, now it, five years later, we're going to get right. uh, in the story. We're going to be getting Jedi survivor. And um, I, th out of all the news that came out of um, Star Wars celebration, I think this is the one I was the most excited for. Cause I was just like, come on. I, like, I want that fallen order Two trailer and i heard rumors that it was going to be called jedi survivor but you know mm -hmm. just with rumors and everything you got to take with a grain of salt yeah but once they finally showed that trailer i was like 100 percent on board because they don't show you much but what they show you like i felt like you know a fish on a hook just like mm -hmm. you know just keep reeling me in keep reeling me in like mm -hmm. a little small breakdown it's just we get the uh we get this dark figure uh he's saying why lead when they won't follow why fight when you can't win mm -hmm. and it's it's going in directions that i wasn't expecting and that's what makes me like on board for it so but yeah uh, real quick what, what were your thoughts on the trailer i was completely blown away i i was very excited again it's jedi fallen order is one of my favorite disney era projects for its story and i can't wait to see where Cal, Cal Kestis goes. I, I just instantly, he became one of my fav, fan favorite. I've been reading Star Wars books for 20 plus years. And when you have a 
an entirely fresh creation, a character that catapults to the top. And it, like it, you instantly endear him like, hey, man, you guys did an amazing job. And when I was seeing it, I really wanted a glimpse of uh, Sister Marin. I didn't get it. I was like, oh, man, because when we see Sister Marin on Korriban in uh, this game, it's not quite the same feeling than seeing Korriban in the Clone Wars show. And the reason for that is when the courtship of Princess Leia. One second. So in this story, the late Dave Wolverton introduces Corbin, right? And it's quite a different Corbin from what we see in George Lucas's version in the Clone Wars series. He completely changed the aesthetic of the planet. He changed a lot about the cultures and blah, 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 and everything in there. I personally prefer this version more. I still like the Clone Wars one, but I, I felt this one is better. And when we see the Jedi Fallen Order... I think it was a very conscious effort from them to combine the two. When you see their ornamentation, the, the garments that Sister Mar Marin is wearing, the environments, the lush jungles that you go into with ideas that, hey, this version of Corbin indeed has rancors, right? Oh, my God, this is this is this legend stuff. And I really wanted to see Sister Marin in there because I feel there's a lot of potential of post-Jedi Order storytelling and, and relationships. I never sold into George Lucas's celibate monk taking kids from their parents and raising them to be these like uh, uh, religious ideologues kind of thing. Like I, I don't buy it. That's not my Jedi. I don't like that stuff. I like mm -hmm. the stuff where it's a family story and attachments and, and bonds that people shape with one another matter. So I'm, I'm a little bit deviating from the topic, but I want to bring it home into this trailer. It was very important to, for me to see where Cal Kestis and Sister Marin go together as friends, as comrades, but also as a couple. I want to see that relationship blossom to show that a Jedi indeed can lean on somebody else emotionally and invest their heart into somebody and not be, not be ruled by their emotions at the same time. And it was a little bit I was like, oh, man, all right, maybe they're just not ready to reveal more. But when we saw the trailer... I saw enough of there to be completely like going cr crazy over. It's like, hey, who is that other inquisitor in there? He's he's not the one we've seen before. He's like a, like saggy and big. He's like looking things there. It was like mysterious aura there, but also this caped figure who is clearly not an inquisitor, a rocking a, a a Sith lightsaber. Like, wait, 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 hold on a sec. Why are you confusing me like that? That's not Darth Maul. But who is this? Is it Quinlan Voss rocking the red lightsaber because he went completely batshit crazy and he's now not following the Jedi Order at all? He's been completely consumed by the dark side. He's so intriguing. He was my my entire focus in that trailer. Yeah, I had some suspicions on who that um, that uh, Sith like uh, Inquisitor like character was at first. Um, uh, I'm just going to say a quick spoiler alert. If you have not seen uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi yet, they do yeah. uh, make a reference. So you guys who haven't seen it. Here's a quick spoiler. Um, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi makes a reference to Quinlan Boss. Yeah. And I was just like, okay, maybe that might tie in to um, the Fallen Order game, because I think this game takes place around the same time as Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah. Uh, another surprising theory that I had about who that was, was Seer. Because Jedi Fallen Order kept implying, like Trilla especially kept implying, like how long until Seer betrays you too? Like, and they kind of make some implications here mm. and there that she's a little unstable. Like, because like mm. when she's confronting Vader, she's still like trying to tap into that dark side and everything. So at first I was like, maybe that might be Seer. Mm. And also I thought it was Marin at first, like, because mm. like the long white hair, I'm like, oh wait, that's, uh, no, that's a man. So um mm -hmm. So it wasn't a, so I'm definitely intrigued and I can definitely see it being Quinlan boss. Um, but I get, you know, is this, it's, they, uh, they definitely gave us a lot to like speculate on and, but now it's going to like drive us crazy for like the next year or so until we get more answers or until the next trailer comes out. But I am kind of with you. They didn't like show, um, like, honestly, I think all the other characters, Seer, Grease, um, Marin, we get implications because like in the trailer, we see the Mantis crashing. 
So mm-hmm. we're just like, wait, what happened to them? You know, that was like racing through my head. And I was just like, oh, no. Um, and then uh, another thing that I was kind of a little disappointed about, but I mean, it's not like a huge thing. Um, I guess Cal Kestis is going back to a single bladed lightsaber. Like mm-hmm. part of it was him using Sears to make a double bladed one. Right. And then they can detach. Now he's back to single blade. Um, I could see where maybe he might be more experienced with it to where he doesn't need a double blade anymore. So, mm-hmm. uh, and this is just kind of me being nitpicky, but I personally think that Cal should have been like the more consistent character to have an orange lightsaber. Cause they gave it mm-hmm. to us. And I've seen a lot of artwork, uh, mm-hmm. Uh, where he's holding an orange lightsaber like man that'd be kind of cool if he was like that one character in canon that you know consistently had an orange lightsaber but i think the only person that i think had one in canon right now is obi-wan in that master and apprentice book Mm -hmm. um but i think that was just uh there's i like the trailer because it has more questions than answers and i like that because you know i want to I've been trying to avoid spoilers on anything Star Wars or comic book related lately. And I'm just kind of like, I might see the next trailer that comes out and then just kind of like <laughs> avoid anything other news about it, like gameplay. Cause I want to be surprised by this one. What do you expect from the second? What do, what are your like biggest wants for the sequel? Well, I, I wrote down some notes here. I kind mm-hmm. of want a similar format, like, mm-hmm like an open world format where, you know, you go to all these different planets and, you know, it's another exploration type game. Um, it's just, that was like going back to the force unleashed. Like that was like the biggest issue with um, the sequel. The force unleashed too. is like, it was so much shorter. Like it had great mm-hmm. cinematic, but it was so much shorter. Like you barely got like maybe like two hours of gameplay. Really? I don't to, yeah. Like it's not long at all. Like there's oh, wow. like maybe there's like maybe uh I could probably beat the whole game in like maybe two hours. It's um, that sucks. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's basically Star Killer comes back, and I'm not trying to spoil it. So if you don't want me to, I won't. That's fine. Don't worry. Okay, well, yeah, it's just uh, I don't like care come, about that story much. <laughs> yeah, Star Killer just comes back. He goes and finds some of his old allies, and he fights Darth Vader again, and then that's it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And surprisingly, that game is like, I think, ninety nine dollars on PS Store. <laughs> unless really? You get, unless you get like the PS Now subscription or something. <laughs> it was it was interesting to see. I'm glad I own the games because I yeah I have the physical copies. I'm not paying ninety nine dollars for that. I have it like purely so like, hey guys, look, I have a physical copy. <laughs> <laughs> but I also um, I also kind of want better. Like uh, I hope we get like the uh, same like lightsaber upgrades and everything where you can mm-hmm. customize it and make it like whatever, whichever one you want, like your own personal color. Um, but what I really want to see is I want, uh, I would hope that this would tie into other stories. Like I want to see like other mm-hmm. cameos, like it'd be cool if maybe we saw Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, and I do have a question about that, but which we'll get into in a little bit, but um, what about you? What are your hopes for it? So I have a list of demands, basically. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, it's I, I like to go into things without anticipation of what I want because you get disappointed. But there are a couple of things that I think logically they can extend the game. Here's the thing. Vast majority of Star Wars games that fans remember are always Jedi-centric, right? It's If you don't have a lightsaber, you don't have a proper Star Wars experience. We're like, okay, all right, we get it. That's one of the tenets, one of the pillars of Star Wars storytelling, lightsabers and the Jedi. But there's more to it. What always frustrated me is in both Mass Effect games, right? Obviously, Bioware, obviously guys who spun an entire new fictional universe based on their early Star Wars work. That's why I'm comparing the Mass Effect to Star Wars, to Knights of the Old Republic. You have all these different planets, and yet you just point and click, and you're there. Can I freaking fly to a new planet? Can you, like, give me a little, you know, a spaceship? It doesn't take a lot of horsepower graphically to throw a bunch of stars on screen, a bunch of planets, nebulas, and you fly through some debris, punch in your actual combination to the next, you know, star map, star chart click and you're there and you have to navigate there go through a landing cycle to give you i always feel that presentation is very important to storytelling 
when you have attachment to your cabin, to your, you know, what, ha- what is happening on the screen, stuff like this. That's my first ask. You, you sound like you have something to add there. Go well, on. I was wanting to add to that a little bit. I was just like, I know that they did something similar to that in the uh, KOTOR game, where when you travel to another planet, there's always that risk that you're going to get ambushed by, like, uh, enemy fighters. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'd like to see something kind of, like, along the lines of that. But too. extend but, that, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. Extend it, like, give me, because I feel... Uh, a main hero in the cabin manipulating the instrumentation and then going through that link, it puts you more into that world. It's mm-hmm. cinematic and it, it feels you like, oh my God, look at all these stars. And I'm actually going to a physical planet. Yeah. Next ask is second playable character. Uh, what if it's Sister Marin? Mm-hmm. What if you emphasize co-op play and you could completely play the game where the second character is tethered to you via AI? And it's controlled entirely by computer if you don't have a friend or family member to play with. Or you could log online and say, hey, why, some, why don't, doesn't somebody take up the role of that second character system merit? And we could play together. That's the second one. Third one, I do prefer this Tomb Raider-like world where it's not entirely completely 360-degree open world. It's hub-based. You got one large hub, you explore your area around it, and you're back to, to your normal thing. So I want more of that, but I do hope the hubs are bigger this time and there's more things to do, like NPCs that you talk to, solve local problems, be in the Jedi lore, role play as a Jedi, the things that you do, not just simple fetch quests. Oh, go kill this creature. Oh, go do this thing. Feel like you're doing Jedi things, like resolving issues between villagers or something, or going to a cantina and stopping some major fight from happening, things like that. And putting yourself at risk of being exposed by the Imperials. Yeah, I agree. Kind of like uh, like what Mace Windu said, like be a keeper of the peace, not a soldier, essentially. Yeah. Um, I 100% agree. I also think it would be kind of cool if we got like on that note, like um, like instead of just like scanning something and um, like and it just saves into your data bank, like it'd be kind of mm-hmm. cool like we had like more puzzles. and More uh, cerebral stuff, yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think I yeah I do know what you were talking about like having a second playable character. I know they did something similar to that like in uh, the Arkham Knight game where like if you're playing as along with Nightwing or Robin, like you can switch between fighting, you know, and make them part of the story. Like even though you're not just even though it's all centered around Batman, but mm-hmm. um, I think it'd be kind of cool, yes, to have uh, a game where you have uh, uh, other characters come in and join the story. They did that with Spider Man, like mm-hmm. uh, where you played as either mary jane or miles morales or somebody else um another thing that i would like to see is like because it shows in the trailer that he loses his lightsaber like the empire Mm -hmm. becomes in possession of it i don't know if it was just he was captured or they just took it from him so that way he couldn't have it i'd like to see what we should have uh what we were supposed to get with the first one is that we have to like um learn combat and get out of situations without a lightsaber like um like so spend like a maybe a a good portion of the game like just having to use like your environment like maybe use like rocks or something using the force and everything and uh and then like kind of give us like a quest to get your lightsaber back Uh, does that make sense yeah totally and the last thing that i really want is I never enjoy cameo fest and anything. If you're introducing cameos for the sake of having them, like Luke at the end of Mandalorian season two, I still don't like that. I, I feel that it was just a cheap exploitation of a character that they knew people would respond to. Like, oh, let's put Luke in there. I would rather have them focus on these new characters that they created. They broke new ground. Stick with your guns. Don't mm-hmm. dilute it with like, oh, by the way, this character is going to waltz into your story. Don't do that. Focus on these characters and bring one meaningful cameo back. It could be canon or it could be something like Legends. In Legends, I'm Googling it right now, literally as you speak, there's a famous, famous comic book called Vector. It's basically a 10-issue miniseries which went across different Star Wars series. And it featured a character, a female Jedi. I forget her name, sorry. Like, I'd have to Google it. She starts off all the way in the back Republic Old Republic, and she's frozen in carbonite, and she survives the events of what's transpiring there in the Old Republic, and she lives into the modern day Star Wars, the Galactic Empire, like Vader and everybody else. And I also believe she shoots off into the future with Kate Skywalker. So basically, she traverses all these areas of Star Wars eras. 
What if you bring one Legends character that, that was recognized or loved by fans, retool them, retailer them to your story, how you see fit, but focus on this one character so they don't feel like a cheap exploitation and they feel more like the integral part to the story? Mm-hmm. I 100% agree. Um, that'd be, uh, yeah. I was like, I was like, that's, I want that now too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Maybe I should write that again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just like when you were explaining, just like, that would be great. And I want that to happen. I'm going to add that to my list of <laughs> demands now. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but we, um, yeah, uh, there were some, uh, like when you said tied to like maybe someone from legends or some other can, like originally in the back to tank, like I thought that I know that I didn't research, I didn't read the comic yet, but I know of right. him. It was Lord Moman, like from the Darth Vader comic from the Canon comic. Yes. I like, wouldn't know them. Yeah. Um, originally that's who I thought that that was in the back to tank. Cause I, I, I haven't read the comic. I don't even know what yeah, he I haven't got like, to those yet. Like I have so the, many comic books to catch up to as far as the new stuff is concerned, but it was just, it looked more like a Sith than an inquisitor. So that's why I was just hmm. like, cause it was all hooded and everything. I'm like, I wonder if that might be like somebody from that. They, but again, I, uh, I honestly, uh, I haven't read that comic yet. I don't know very much about Lord moment. I, all I know is that he was a, a Sith Lord from older times and Canon. So I didn't know if, um, but I knew that he preserved himself somehow. And Do you think wondering. that person in the back to tank is the same one that we'll later see in the cape in the same trailer? Yes. Yes. Really? Because I uh, I watched a YouTube video uh, mm -hmm. before watching this. Like it was a breakdown. Apparently, uh, uh, the guy in the back to tank, you know, he only has one arm. And like, but when you, mm -hmm. uh, but like, and when you look at that, the, the Sith Lord that, Cal mm -hmm. Kestis is engaging. He doesn't look like he he's fighting with only one arm. So some have speculated ah. that some some that have speculated that is him. I mean, the only other person that I know that fights with one arm that can you know is Vader. And, he's Vader, and yeah. obviously a character is not Vader. Exactly. Uh -huh. Um. So, but yeah, like I said, I I'm not a hundred percent sure who uh, like the history of Lauren Loman. That was just who I thought they were trying to tie in like other. Mm -hmm. uh, story arcs to like this uh this um to this game because i think it takes place around a similar time i know that it takes place around when after anakin became vader mm -hmm. uh but i still need to read it. i heard it's really good but um yeah but you mentioned a meaningful cameo and a lot of that's the big question i've been wanting to get to like a lot of people have been speculating this and i was wanting to get your answer um, do you think that we will either see a Obi Wan and Fallen and Jedi Survivor, or B Cal Kestis in the Obi Wan show? Yeah, that's a big one. That's a big, big question. Um, it's very plausible that we will see Cal Kestis. Obviously, the actor portraying him, he's still the same age. He looks the same. Um, Cameron Monaghan. Monaghan. How, how do you pronounce his name? I think that's I'm not I'm terrible with names myself. Yeah, I'm terrible with names too. Uh, Cameron Monaghan, right? He he's wonderful in 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 the role. He is the right age to perform him in the show. He could be there as like as an assist. It's like, hey, you you know, Obi Wan Kenobi, you're not alone. We here are the Force sensitives are there with you. We got this. You know, we can fight the Empire. Where there Kenobi appears in the game again because the timetable aligns. It's totally plausible for them to be there. But I, it, once again, it's like when we get into the nitty and gritty of the terminology as cameo, I don't like cameos. Don't make him a cameo. Make him a presence. Make him impact and shift and dent the character and shift the story in a such a way that it, he's integral part. He, the story wouldn't function without him. Right. I, so, yeah, I, I would perfectly be fine with that. It was like, yeah, that makes sense why Kenobi's here or vice versa. Yeah, personally, when it comes to Cal Kestis being an Obi Wan, one that would be cool, but I would most likely be more uh, expecting more of a a reference to him or an Easter egg. Mm. Like maybe they see the Mantis in the background yeah. of a spaceport somewhere, mm -hmm. and um, or like maybe Kenobi finds himself in trouble and he comes to his aid. But then again, that's kind of treading on the Mandalorian with Luke Skywalker. Right. Um, 
so as long as it's meaningful to the story, kind of like you said, like, and it's not just like, oh, hey, here's you and McGregor in the game, or here's mm-hmm. uh, Cal Kestis in the show, like, you know, just for fan service, you know, I'm totally on. It's, it's, if it's meaningful and relates to the story, like, I agree with you. I'm on. I'm on board with that. Mm-hmm. Um, but at this point, I don't know if he is going to be on there. It might be like a tease for like second season. That's yeah. kind of like a prediction. I could be dead wrong, but um, either way, I mean, it'll be cool. Uh, you know, if they find a way to tie it in with the story, because like I said, Fallen or- uh, Survivor takes place around the same time as Obi Wan Kenobi, so I can probably see where it could easily connect. Yeah. Um, uh, Adam, quick question. Go for it. In 2019, there was mm-hmm. a five-issue miniseries Jedi: The Fallen Order. Mm-hmm. Have you read it? I have not. Oh, okay. I was going to ask you something about this, but um, I would highly recommend reading it because it felt like it always feels that the comic books are an entirely separate entity in terms of like how the story is executed, how the characters feel. Like you understand that you're reading from the same universe, but the comic books have their a feeling of their own. So when when the comic series was announced, I was like, oh, I don't know how they how they're gonna which way it's gonna swing. Is it gonna tie into the video games too well? Is it gonna be just a cheap offshoot that's like playing on the name of the video game because it's popular? I was surprised how well it ties into the game because it's a prequel to the original game. Oh. And it it's I don't think it's a spoiler, it's just an incentive for you to get into it since you're a huge fan. It focuses on Ino Cordova. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm gonna check that out then because I was Five wanting more mini series. Yeah, it's like I'm usually I'm quite critical of the new era comic books because they either go for that photoshopped ultra realistic look that for some reason at Marvel they think that's what passes for good comic art and they're not willing to experiment. I don't like that look, or they really push it and make great mini series, which this is where I feel most of the writers and artists' talent goes into. So when you check that book, because it has the benefit of being a limited series, dude, they put all the heart and soul into it. every panel, like the attention to detail, even even Cordova, like his facial likeness. When you look at the game, when you look at the uh, actor on point. Awesome. Yeah. I was wanting more of his story because like mm-hmm. um, I wanted more backstory. And like uh, I don't remember them implying what happened to, you know, Cordova. Um uh because i played the game like like i said four or five times and i it may just be in the data bank somewhere and i just haven't read it but i i've been wanting more about you know cordova so yeah thank you i will uh i'm gonna check that out now because uh i I was definitely enjoyed cool i will uh i'll definitely check that out because i've been wanting more of his uh more of him like so to speak so Mm -hmm. i'm gonna find that um but do you have any other thoughts about uh Jedi Survivor. Jedi Survivor. Well, yes, I do. They there's another, I don't think it's been confirmed yet, but there's a rumor going around that it's going to be next gen only. So my first concern is is it going to run on the Unreal Engine 5 or not? Because that's supposed to be the the real arrival of the next generation. Because we have all this hardware there, the new Xbox, the new PlayStation, but without the software to support it. Honestly, all the recent games, even I would say like the most visually stunning looking game, which is Horizon 2, Forbidden West, looks phenomenal. Don't get me wrong. But it still feels like it's within the realm of PlayStation 2, like last generation, just with more bells and whistles, a little bit more wind effects, a little bit of, you know, like particle effects and stuff like that. But it pretty much still feels like an older title. So once they start developing this one, because Tomb Raider was very quick with their announcement. They said like, hey, guys, by the way, we're working on a new Tomb Raider. It is indeed been developed from scratch on Unreal Engine 5. I just don't want to know the scenario with the Knights of the Old Republic. When it dropped in 2003, I'm, I'm looking at it I'm like, uh, bro, this is Star Wars. This is Lucasfilm. You can like afford all the money in the world. Why does this game look so par- subpar visually? Right. Yeah. The art was there. Again, it's nothing against Bioware. They artistically look dope. But in terms of hardware, like software, it wasn't there. So I want Jedi Survivor to have either Unreal Engine 5 or I want it to be its own engine retooled that has greater emphasis on like environmental stuff, but most importantly on facial animation. 
because the first yeah. game was already good. You really, those actor performances felt really, really on point. Like you got nuances in the facial expressions because that's usually the most difficult thing to animate. I can tell you that as a trained animator. We have like over 40 different independent muscles here moving, you know, on their own accord, expressing a lot of different emotions. That's the hardest thing for animators to do. So in part two, I'm looking forward to how they're going to do it. I'm also looking forward to how they're going to involve the combat system. It can no longer just live on that Souls-like formula. It needs to involve past that point. If you're going to do more spawnable uh, stormtroopers, like show us how they arrive there, how they take over the territory again, something like that. Like you said, new generation games, especially single player games that are not baiting you with like, you know, loot crates or like purchasable items and stuff like that. They heavily depend on customized characters, more skins, more lightsaber techniques, more looks for your Calcaster, maybe more hair size like in the Witcher games, more ponchos, you know, deck out your BB-8. If it's more open areas, give us more like ground vehicles that you can navigate. Put us more, like the world itself doesn't need to be bigger, but the things that you do in it need to feel denser. Like the stuff that you actually do in the game. Yeah, I would like to see like, Mm -hmm. say if if you're in the streets of like, I think they confirmed that Coruscant is a world that you'll be exploring in this game. Like I think that's... I think that uh, like that one scene where it shows that uh, that Imperial sitting at that desk, like he's uh-huh. the. I think that they said that that was Coruscant in the background behind him. I would like to see like kind of like what we saw in Attack of the Clones, where you have to chase someone through like the the roads or something like that. You get to activate a speeder, or you can jump kind of like what Anakin did. I'd like to mm-hmm. see kind of things where you can use more of the environment, not just with the Force, but like you know like. Kind of like uh, with Kashyyyk, where you got to ride the AT-AT. Like, I want kind of, like, I want more kind of like uh, stuff like that, to where you don't just have to rely on your lightsaber. You have to, you know, use all the other equipment around you. I think that that would, you know, make it more engaging, in my opinion. Action set pieces definitely would come in handy. Like, the way Uncharted did it, obviously, is hard to replicate because it's Naughty Dog, because every single game that releases pure gold. But you can still do action set pieces because the Star Wars sandbox invites that lights the you know pod races on different offshoot planets or chases like you said on you know, Coruscant or other things or like just give me a, a swoop bike and put me like in a jungle like world and like have me race those stormtroopers and just shoot the crap out of them there's so much stuff you could do yeah that was like one of my biggest uh, disappointments about the Kashyyyk level because like when you cl- infiltrate the AT-18 and you uh, climb on one of those bikes i was like oh we're gonna fly one and then he just like crawls yeah. over just like oh man yeah. i mean it was still fun to get the you know blast maybe the ambition was there but like at the last moment like always with the creative projects they had to cut it short because it was overly ambitious mm-hmm. yeah that could have been but man mm-hmm. that still would have been really fun yeah but um but other than that um uh, i think that's a good time to go ahead and uh start wrapping things up again uh Everybody, please, I'll put links in the video. Be sure to go check out Ben from Star Wars Timeline. Again, Ben, thank you so much for coming on today. I really appreciate having you on. No, dude, it was tons of fun. I'm always ready to talk video games. If you only saw my gaming collection behind this uh, screen, obviously you guys don't see it. I, like, I'm a nut when it comes to collecting physical games. Like, I still insist on, like, no, 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 I'm not buying digital. I'm buying physical. I got all my Star Wars games. I think you have poisoned me. I'm literally going to like turn off the screen and go reinstall the game. <laughs> Even though I'm playing 25,000 games at a time now, which is a disease. Tomb Raider, like Final Fantasy, like so many games, I'm still going to install the Jedi Fallen Order and start playing it right now. Man. Yeah, I'm probably going to do the same thing. My kids are uh, taking a nap right now. So I'm probably just going to be like, like, well, while they're napping, just like pay. Like, like when yeah. adult, yeah. <laughs> don't ever lose that, man. Like don't ever lose the inner child when you still want to like have fun with it. <laughs> but again ben thank you so much for coming on and again uh guys go check out his gameplay he's been playing through uh knights of the old republic and you are currently playing on knights of the old republic 2 correct i'm playing knights of the old republic to the uh community mod edits with like enhanced textures but it's pretty much vanilla game and i'm playing the star wars the old republic i'm running my first character assassin class nice very nice. Yeah. So everybody go check that out. And also just not, like Ben's channel is great. Not just for the video game stuff. He's got like great podcasts, great reviews, uh, great uh, character um, highlight videos. There we go. And yeah, uh, 
again, man, I appreciate you having me on your channel months ago and appreciate you coming on. And uh, hopefully when we get more or when Jedi Survivor releases, hopefully we can come back and do another discussion about our thoughts of it. And, you know, hopefully like all the things that we want were there and hopefully it won't be like a video. It's just like, I wanted this, but they didn't do it. And, you know, yeah. nerd out basically. Right. It, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It was my pleasure, man. It's always fun talking to you. I love your channel. I love the reviews you're, you're doing and I'm glad that you're like sort of back on track. Look, even if it's one video a week, it's like if you, you're putting so much heart and soul into your stuff, like it genuinely just comes off. I don't care if a channel has like 55 viewers or like 20, 50 million. Like if it's the person is really like when you're a genuine fan and you're not there about like, oh, they ruined this or that. It was like, no, like I like this. I don't like that. Like I, I miss that mature talk about Star Wars, like just being at ease talking about things that you like or dislike without necessarily being at each other's throats. You know, that's what yeah. I like. And your channel is on point, man. Oh, well, thank you so much. Same, man. Uh, so I love your... I love all the content you do, like, because, you know, a lot of people, you know, they just, you know, you put all of your energy into it. And I definitely see that. And it's great. And, you know, like I said, everybody go check out Ben from Star Wars Timeline. And I'll be posting links down in the description below. And again, man, thank you so much for coming on. And thank you. And uh, hope you guys have a great day. And be sure to comment down below uh, what your thoughts are on both Jedi Fallen Order and Jedi Survivor. But guys, till then, take care, everyone. Bye.